reading a book, distinguishing faces or understanding speech. All these things we as human beings can easily do. But it is very difficult to design a machine which can do them. Many scientists and engineers have tackled this problem. But they reach a deadlock when they want to design a machine which has the same ability as a human brain. Then how can we make a breakthrough in this problem? We believe that the best strategy is to learn from the brain. We are studying the mechanism of visual information processing in the brain and trying to use it as a design principle for new information processes of the future. There are over 10 billion neural cells or neurons in the human brain which have complicated interconnections and which constitute a network on a huge scale. Let's watch what is going on in this network. Recently, neurophysiologists have discovered many new facts about the mechanism of the brain. In the visual cortex of the cerebrum, for instance, neurons are found to respond selectively to local features of a visual pattern, such as lines and edges in particular orientations. In the area higher than the visual cortex, it has been found that cells exist which respond selectively to certain figures like circles, triangles or squares, or even to a human face. Accordingly, the visual system seems to have a hierarchical structure, in which simple features are first extracted from the stimulus pattern, and then these features are integrated into more complicated ones. Such a neural network is not complete at birth. It gradually grows, adapting flexibly to circumstances after birth. Sophisticated brain functions such as learning, memory and pattern recognition are believed to be acquired through the growth of the neural network, in which neurons expand their branches making connections with many other neurons. Based on such physiological evidence, we have studied how to synthesize a neural network model which has the same abilities as the human brain. As a result, we have succeeded in developing a model called the neocognitron, which has great ability to recognize patterns. The neocognitron is a multi-layered neural network consisting of a cascade of many layers of simplified neural cells. The connections between the neural cells are modifiable and grow gradually in accordance with stimuli given to the network. A repetitive presentation of a set of training patterns is sufficient for the self-organization of the network. Some of the cells in the network become selectively responsive to each of the training patterns. Thus, the neocognitron, like a human being, has the ability to learn. Then let's see how the neocognitron recognizes patterns when it has finished learning. If a pattern A is presented to the input layer, only the one cell which corresponds to pattern A is activated in the deepest layer. This means that the neocognitron answers that the input pattern is A. If pattern B is presented to the network, the signal flows through different paths and another cell corresponding to pattern B is activated in the deepest layer. Even if pattern B is shifted in position or deformed in shape, the same cell in the deepest layer responds. In other words, the neocognitron recognizes the shape of the pattern independently of its size and position. Let's see in more detail how information from the input pattern is processed in the neocognitron. The input pattern is first observed over a narrow range by cells in the lower stage and several local features are extracted. At the next stage these features are combined by observation over a wider area and higher order features are extracted. This operation is applied repeatedly through the cascade connection of a number of stages. Consequently, each cell of the higher stage integrates all the information of the input pattern and responds only to one specific pattern. 
One of the distinctive characteristics of the neocognitron is that positional errors of the stimulus features can be tolerated a little at a time at every stage of feature extraction and integration. In order to see this process, let's take a look at the detailed structure between two adjoining stages in the network. The feature extracting cells in the network are called S cells. After each layer of S cells, a layer of another kind of cells called C cells is inserted. Each C cell gets signals from a group of S cells which extracts the same feature but from slightly different positions. The C cell is activated if at least one of these S cells is active. Even if the stimulus feature is shifted in position and another S cell is activated instead of the first one, the same C cell keeps responding. Hence, the C cell's response is less sensitive to shifts in position of the input pattern. In the whole network, layers of such S cells and C cells are arranged alternately. The operation to tolerate the positional errors a little at a time in each stage, rather than in one step, plays an important role in endowing the network with an ability to recognize even distorted patterns. Now let's see the ability of the neocognitron. Using the principle of the neocognitron, we have designed a system which can recognize handwritten numerals. This system is operating on a mini computer, and it can even operate on a microcomputer. Let's draw a numeral 2 on the tablet. From the analysis of the stimulus features, the input pattern is recognized as 2. In the deepest layer, UC4 at the extreme right, only cell 2 has been activated. This means that the neocognitron has recognized the input pattern correctly. Now let's draw another pattern. I can recognize the handwritten numeral. You've just drawn the numeral 5. The neocognitron correctly judges that the input pattern is 5. Now the response of the cells of the network to various patterns will be shown. You will see first how a shift in the position of an input pattern affects the response of the neocognitron. If an input pattern is presented in a different position, the response of cells in intermediate layers, especially those near the input layer, varies with the shift. However, the deeper the layer is, the smaller is the variation in response. The cells of the deepest layer are not affected at all by a shift in position of the input pattern. You will see next how the neocognitron correctly recognizes input patterns when they are distorted. As may be seen in this picture, even though the input pattern has been increased or diminished in size or is skewed in shape, the response of the cells of the deepest layer is not affected. Sometimes when the input pattern has been distorted too much from the training pattern, the response of the cells in the deepest layer is weak, but still the response is elicited from the correct cell.
The neocognitron can be trained to recognize not only Arabic numerals, but also other sets of patterns like alphabets, geometrical shapes or others. Hence it is also possible to design a neocognitron as a universal pattern recognizer, which can be used after training for an individual purpose. As has been demonstrated here, the neocognitron has many remarkable properties which modern computers and pattern recognizers do not have yet. We are continuing our research and we hope to develop an artificial brain closer to the human brain.